Whichever platform we're on, we're on rented land. You like jazz? <laughs> See? <laughs> Have you ever wanted to ask somebody what social media platform you should be posting on? Well, in today's video, we have Steven Makes Videos. He's a good friend of mine from LA, and he has an impressive career in social media. Not only has he posted every single day for an entire year, but during that year, he gained over 110,000 followers. He's also worked on a lot of major YouTube channels and is currently a consultant helping others grow their social media presence. I can feel the tourists. So we started this walk all the way in Williamsburg at the Devotion Cafe and now we are in Dumbo about to go look at like the bridge on Washington Street. How did we end up walking this far, Jen? Uh, <laughs> I think sheer, idea. sheer I force, know, just <laughs> sheer force of will. It was a good walk. Shipping containers and places between all the interesting parts. Yeah, I saw gas cheaper than gas in LA, and we're in Brooklyn, and that's crazy. Do you remember what it was? What Three, was the gas? Three twenty something. Okay. And okay. how much is it in LA? I, we're looking at like upper fours, like four eighty plus. This is the first time I've been back here since probably my first year in the city. I was here in the winter, I think, last year, but it, this is the most busy I have ever seen Dumbo. Look how many people yeah. there are. I haven't are. been back here since my first trip here either. Uh, Steven is here in New Hi. York City. He makes videos. Steven, I make videos. Steven makes videos. Steven makes videos. <laughs> Basically two weeks, yeah. 12 days, just to see if I like it, see if I can move out here instead of being in New York. Are you in 60 or 30? 30. Oh. How do we meet? We uh, through edit party with creators of my C. I think he went to a meetup and I followed it because I thought it was cool. Mm. And then I just kept seeing you guys in my feed. And then when I came out here one time, I just had to had to go. What is special about Steven, in my opinion, is your you did a full year of making a video every single day. Yeah. And not only did you do that, but you actually grew your channel. I did. During that entire yeah, year. Yeah, we had like 110K by the end of it. Yeah. It was fun, and I don't do it as much now, although yeah. I am starting to do it like a little bit. Again, I just needed a break from it, so I took about a month off from posting on there. Yeah. Just focusing on client stuff, but yeah, I interview strangers. I also got a lot better at talking to people. It was a crash course in human connection, but it was also just like, uh, it was, I can't believe I did that for a whole year. Wow, yeah, actually, I think <laughs> about that, I'm like, how did I do that for a whole year? Um, what was your most viral video? Like, what do you... Like, fastest growing or, like, all-time best performer? Was there a video that you think, like, got people to see the rest of your videos? Yeah, so my first one blew up. Yeah. That got me to 10,000 balls with one video. Yeah. And that one, that was insane. All I said was, like, I had a sign that said, say anything. What? And I said, say anything in this mic and win nothing. It's like a play on, like, the type, you know, like, don't talk in this mic and win everything. Yeah. Hey. At the end of that video, I said, someone said, I love you to me. And I was like, oh, thanks. I don't have any followers. I don't know who that was. But the, this is that triggered people to follow. And then all the comments were like, bro, what do you mean you don't have followers? You have 27,000 followers. You have 45,000 followers. You have 56,000 followers. I remember this. Yeah, yeah. That was so funny. And then I just kept posting. It started because I got laid off and I had footage. I, I shot that first shoot was like a pilot for the company I worked for and I was going to pitch it to them. I didn't know this. Really? No, I didn't know that it was a, it was like a pitch. Oh wow, yeah. So. And then you just decided to upload it for yourself. Yeah, so that first shoot, I, oh. I told people like, yeah, oh, this is gonna be pitched for This unnamed so -so company missed yeah. out. Yeah. And uh, well, they laid me off before I could. Uh, How long were you employed with them? Two years. Two years. Yeah, and uh, it sucks because I was ma I was about to make the moves. Even on my way out of the office, as they were laying me off, I I went to the CEO and I said, "Hey, just so you know, I saw those videos. Let me know if you want to um, do something. Like do something with them." Uh, needless to say, as soon as I post that first video, I rescinded that offer because I realized that I'm, gl I'm glad I didn't end up in their hands. Yeah. Because it would not have been the same. Okay. So for somebody who hasn't seen your videos. How would you explain them? How tall are you? Yeah. How drunk are you? Like these are the questions I ask. That's yeah. Not that complicated. I just like test people's honesty. 
man on the street. Yeah, on a street tester. interviews. Yeah. yeah, I make some money off yeah. TikTok and stuff, but like. So the uh, yeah, the TikTok money is kind of. Eh. I made yeah. it like enough to live for a time, but it's I have to like put out a minute long video to make money on it, and right. I cannot. Like sometimes the content just isn't there or it's not interesting enough and I'm just like, I don't want to force it. So I just been relaxing with that. I haven't done that many this year. Yeah. Um, but like in my peak, I could reliably count on one or two to pop off per month and that was enough to pay the bills. So that was great. That's now good. now the TikTok money is brand partnerships. Yeah. So I, I do a couple integrations here and there and I'm looking to do more. An integration has to be perfect for me to justify doing it. It has to be really well aligned in my vertical or I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Uh, so that's how it's working right now. But mostly for work, I do consulting and video editing for other creators. Mostly YouTubers, especially TikTok, might be getting banned. Um, like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's why I'm not full, like all in on TikTok at the moment. I'm helping creators move from platforms like TikTok to something maybe more stable. What do you think is most stable right now? YouTube is always stuck out as a home for creators right but that being said like anything can happen there can always be an adpocalypse so don't put all your eggs in one basket if you want to sustainably create content for yourself you have to be on multiple platforms or you have to have multiple revenue streams no matter okay. what platforms you're on if you're on youtube that means adsense it means affiliate links it means brand partnerships if you're on tiktok create a rewards program Maybe get into TikTok shop, but also brand partnerships. Same for Instagram; they don't really pay, yeah. uh, but you know, commi like commissions from branded content and brand partnerships. Yeah. And also, like Steven things. knows a lot about this stuff. Um, I kind of want to dive into that. Sure. Yeah. More. Yeah. Let's find a new spot though, because it's so busy. You're here. right. It's yeah. Really chaotic. Um, I'm just worried. And we're that... gatekeeping this location. We're not going to tell you where we are. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you can't know. <laughs> okay, we found a new spot. But I, We're also honestly, not going to Arguably a better view. What platform oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is best right now? So, oh, it's worried, best about best right now. worried about TikTok leaving. It's not the best way for a creator to make an income. No one platform is. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Just, yeah. just like... I mean in anything, whether you're investing or you're even working a job, like never have ever worked like one job and not had a client or something aside from that because you don't want to put all your time and effort in one thing. Right. How do you feel about people like reposting content? So like you're making videos, mm. let's say for TikTok, but you're also uploading it as a YouTube short and you're also putting it up on Instagram Reels. Like, oh, like you're just you putting this yourself. well yeah you created it yourself but like taking the same video and uploading it the same way everywhere that's fine i do it i mean you could definitely I optimize too, a little but... bit for each platform as far as which platform feels safest i don't think any one platform is safer than any other to post on like everyone every site has their own terms and conditions if that's what you mean as far as content which is safest there are ones that are more restrictive than others sites like instagram are going to be a whole lot more strict than say like x or reddit but as far as monetization goes i'd say tiktok is the dodgiest at the moment just because it's so new and also threat of it getting taken down altogether is uh not great youtube has been the most stable but there can always be something like an adpocalypse that just uh, throws everything in the air. And that's why it's so important to have multiple revenue streams, whether it's through affiliate links or brand partnerships uh, or paid subscriptions through sites like Patreon. You don't want to bank on just one way of making money because if that drops out, you're done. And I don't really believe in job security in the creator economy because it's, it's so flexible. It's so random. We are like, Whichever platform we're on, we're on rented land. It's not ours unless we are, are a nebula or like some platform that we outright own. We are beholden to the terms and conditions and monetization abilities of the platforms that we post on. So you mentioned Nebula. We were talking about this a little mm -hmm. earlier. It's a platform that I haven't heard much about. Okay. But Nebula is the best. Yeah. Just a quick like 
30 second pitch on what okay. Nebula is. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get this pitch right. Dave Wiskus, Sam from Wendover, everyone on the team, love you guys. Okay, so Nebula is a creator run streaming service. Uh, they were formerly or currently partnered with Curiosity Stream for like their subscriptions and I think also their their back end hosting. Basically it's your favorite creators on this platform making content that they can like actually afford decent budgets for because that money is going straight into their pockets. So take like a creator like Wendover Productions, they have from Nebula, they're able to generate better produce higher production value. It wasn't until net Nebula really got going that they started one of my favorite game shows on the internet right now, Jetlag the Game, uh, which is, they post it on YouTube, but you can get every episode a week early on Nebula, and you also uh, can watch The Layover, which is their podcast about shooting that show. Like it, it enables creators, particularly in the information education, like edutainment sector, to monetize their content it allows the like in a better way more directly into their pocket it allows the consumer to find all their favorite creators in one place and you see higher quality content from them probably more frequently that was way more than 30 seconds but anyway nebula is a creator run streaming service short and simple okay when it comes to a new creator that wants a career in this field um do you think it's better to just try to grow your own channel, your own personality, your own audience, and try to make money off that? Or do you think it's better to try to develop a show and grow it through one of these separate entities, other mm. platforms that foster that? Right, say like going through like traditional like TV pitching process versus just like an indie film. Right. Just like kind of like the film industry analogy. Ooh. Do you think that these are like the new TV show pitch? Um, entertainment's entertainment. I think it's totally different from TV. Yeah. I would say it depends on who you want to be. For a creator like Casey Neistat, he actually did have success doing the, the whole pitching thing at HBO, but he, he would not be who he was if he didn't just do it himself with his vlogs. Versus, say, someone like um, Mike Schur. He's a, he was a writer on The Office, he created Parks and Rec, and The Good Place. He's a really an independent creator. He is much better at the traditional channels, and he's not trying to be Casey. He's not trying to be like an independent creator. So it depends on, if you are a creator, how do you want to enter the world? How do you want to entertain people? Do you want to entertain people in a more structured way? It's like starting off as an SNL writer, joining NBC, writing, like, writing one of the greatest sitcoms of all time and then building your own shows or do you want to do your own thing maybe be able to branch out into bigger things later say like sidemen you know like they started from the ground up and then now they're venturing out into other things yeah. i think going that route of doing it yourself is great if you want to learn all aspects of the creative process like that's i'd say that's closer to what i'm doing versus going the traditional model of pitching shows and like going through the Hollywood machine. It's just a completely different world, even if we are playing on the same platforms. Yeah, I think that it just comes down to the age old answer. Just do you. And uh, the people that are really dedicated are the ones that are going to get lucky enough to actually do it the way that they want to do it. The way that you explained it, it sounds like two completely different worlds. Um, yeah, content creation is a great lesson in psychology and sociology, figuring out your place in the world, but yeah. also how you affect other people and how you affect their days and their behaviors. Like making content, putting it out to an audience, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. Uh, whether it's on your own channels or with clients, you can see what works for one client, what doesn't work for another client. It's all so interesting just to see what does it take to keep a human entertained? And then beyond that, how can you afford to do it? Like, how can you just, how can you monetize it in a way that you can keep being entertaining like it's an exchange between the people you bring value to and the people who bring value to you that, that kind of sounds like a generic corporate answer but. this is kind of like an excellent conclusion for now 
go follow Steven makes videos? Uh, sure. Like I, <laughs> I kind of just have a YouTube channel. I call it my playground. It's where I post whatever I want. It's also at Steven makes videos on YouTube. Well, you saw it. Did you click? Crop <laughs> just out my crop hand, it out it right over right. my face. Yeah. Go follow Steven. Like and subscribe. Comment if you love this video. Comment. <laughs> <laughs> Comment. <laughs> Only if you love it. Right. If you hate it, get lost. Subscribe here. <laughs> All right.